Hey everyone, Ari Mopor here, and today we're going to look at how to leverage generative AI to write drivers and full stack web applications to control all of your lab instruments right over here. I've got all my lab instruments that I'm going to automate the whole process of writing that code end to end to not only control them, but be able to control them through my phone, through websites, through any other internet portal. So join me, we're gonna get started, we're gonna look through all the details and we're gonna do this real time with ChatGPT. Before we get started, I wanna give you a brief overview of what is it that we're doing here and then point you to the repository so you can follow along. So first off, what we're trying to achieve here is we're trying to give the ability to, let's say a web service, let's say it's a, it's a different website or uh, our phones or a computer outside of our network or not physically attached to our instruments, the ability to control those instruments. And we do that through what's called a web service. In this case, I'm using a library called Fast API. There are a lot of different ways to do this. There are a lot of different languages that you can use to do this. In this case, we're gonna be using Python and we're gonna be using the Fast API library. And what we're trying to do is we're going to send essentially Skippy commands, SCPI commands over the Visa driver framework. So that's a way to communicate over USB or ethernet. And we're using a, a library called Visa. If you're familiar with some of the national instruments or um, some of the other hardware companies that create lab instruments uh, frameworks, uh, these are different ways to communicate with devices. So Visa is a very common way. There's also USB TMC over USB. There are a lot of different ways to do that. Um, and so in this case, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to talk to my devices, my lab instruments through the internet. So again, let's say if you look over here, I have my instrument right over here on this side and I have the internet on this side. And so there's obviously some sort of intermediary that needs to happen. So I'm gonna to go to www.re.com forward slash power supply forward slash turn on. So what that does is that will send from the internet, let's say I'm going through my phone, that sends an internet connection inbound into my computer, or in this case, we're gonna do a Raspberry Pi, inbound into this web service that's listening for that URL. It routes it to a function, to a function that then calls the Skippy command to send over a physical interface over USB or Ethernet, or again, RS-232 or GPIB, whatever you're using, to the instrument itself to turn on that power supply. Same thing with data acquisition. We'll send information to it, a command, and it will send back the information that we're looking for. So if you want to follow along, I've got my repository here, gitlab.com forward slash AI dash examples forward slash instrument dash controllables. This is actually a repository I'm using. We're building the first layer, but this is a repository I'm building to create an AI lab assistant. More details to follow in a uh, upcoming tutorial. If you wanna follow this particular component of that exercise, you wanna grab the tag simple DP832. Okay, that is already the final, so the final answer, the final solution. I've worked out everything over here just for the DP832 wriggle power supply, not the DL3021 electronic load. That happens later. But we're going to dive into the details. More importantly, we're going to show you how to start really from scratch. We're gonna search around the internet for some basic drivers, but start from scratch on how to leverage generative AI to do a lot of the heavy lifting for us. So there are a few different ways that we can get started. If historically you're familiar with the whole process of writing drivers to control your instruments, you would go to the web and you would search for, let's say the name of your instrument, um, programming manual for that instrument. And then you would go there, you'd grab the PDF, you'd find all the Skippy commands and you would write them manually. If you see over here, these are all the Skippy commands to explain what's the input, what's the output, everything like that. Then companies started to kind of get on board and they wrote the commands for you and put them into like a library that you could then use uh, to download. But in this particular case, this gives me 
the IVI driver, maybe something that I can use to work with LabVIEW doesn't really help me if I want to do this manually with Python or in C or something like that. So then the next step would be if you want to take one step further is maybe look online, possibly on GitHub or GitLab or some other repository. So the DP832 driver for Python. And this would get you something, you know, hopefully that you would find pretty much right away without any issues. I'm going to go to two different. I actually used this as my baseline. I changed a lot of things around. They, uh, they have some classes over here. It looks like they may have removed it since. But I, I was able to leverage what was already out there. So for example, this guy over here, this one puts all the commands, the Skippy commands, and writes all the functions. Now, these are pretty good. One thing that I really like about generative AI is that I can take all of this, put this in here, and have it modify certain things for me. So if I wanna say, I found this code online, um, I want the commands to be formatted in this style. So F and then, you know, let's say sample number and then that. So instead of using with the percent and all the other stuff, I want to use a different kind of format. And what it can do is that it will go ahead and kind of refactor my code. Again, this is the first thing that I found online. I'm sure there are other libraries that you might find that are better or work better for you. In this particular case, I can just have ChatGPT write all of this for me. Now, if you want to kind of skip the process, you can come to my repository over here. And I have the wriggledp.py. Again, this was based off of fixture fab, which I couldn't find the actual Python module. I couldn't find the code anymore. For some reason, it disappeared at the time of recording this. But I have all of the functions here. Now, what I did do is I abstracted a little bit. I created some initialization functions, again, with the help of ChatGPT, to say, OK, I want to initialize using USB TMC. I want to initialize using Visa or I want to use, initialize using a socket, um, once I've selected the type, initialize and then use everything accordingly. So there's a few different kind of setup functions. And then after that, I get to the ID and then get output and yada, yada, yada. So then that goes into the next mode. Later on for the DL3021, I, instead of copying and pasting the first few functions, I've actually created that as a base class and then extended that later. Let's go back to ChatGPT. If you can see over here, you can see that, yes, OK, it has reformatted it perfectly for me. So it's rewriting all the code for me. This is one thing I really, really like about generative AI. All the naysayers say, oh, yes, generative AI, yada, yada, yada. It's not going to work or it, it hallucinates. It. That's fine. But we have easy ways to check this. And it's doing a task for me that like would have been really tedious and monotonous. That's the best part of leveraging generative AI. And again, I'm using ChatGPT4, which is the paid version. You could use any other type of LLM you want. You can use Claude. You can use uh, Gemini. You can use uh, your Copilot or Codium or other integrators. It really doesn't matter. But the, the function here, the functionality that we're trying to showcase is the ability to just very, very rapidly modify things that would be very tedious for us. OK, I'm going to skip this part because I already have my class over here. <clears throat> and what I've also done is I say, OK, I have these functions. So we're going to go through this exercise again. I have the following functions and I need doc strings. So I want you to add doc strings to these functions uh, that discuss what the functions do inputs and outputs. So also remember that the output tokens, it can only send so much. So it may try to skip some steps. 
it may try to say insert code here, or it may not even finish the whole code. You have to be patient with it. You have to iterate with it. Say, oh, well, you gave me these first four functions. Can you give me the rest? Or can you fill in the rest of the code? I'm copying and paste this. Um, so if you see over here, now it's giving me nice doc strings. Look at this. All of the inputs, outputs, anything that we're looking for, and it's going to give me all of that documentation. Again, this all comes for free, meaning the LLM is just working for you. Like you, you should have your code documented, especially with nice doc strings like this at this point, because AI is doing it for you. Okay, so we've got the first fundamentals. And then what we can do is we can say something like write tests to validate each one of these functions. I will actually be using this on physical hardware. So please do not mock anything out. Now, the default behavior for a lot of these LLMs, especially when you're talking to like a piece of hardware, especially if it under understands that contextually, is that it will try to mock or kind of fake out the hardware to create like a wall almost and say, oh, you hit to this point where you're going to hit something in the hardware world. We're now outside of the software world. So we're just going to kind of fake it out. We don't want to do that. And so well, that's very, very common with testing frameworks, both in embedded and even uh, higher level languages like in Python. Uh, and so we want to make sure to avoid that because I want to actually physically test this on my power supply, which we're going to go into later. If you can see here, it kind of got stuck. You can say regenerate or you can just say, hey, you got stuck at measure. Let's do that even real time. Hey, you got stuck at measure voltage. Can you continue? Yeah, absolutely. And then it continues through. Great. Fantastic. I'm going to stop it anyways. And then I'm going to start a new one. So write test to validate each one of these functions. OK, so it says it, it, you have to be aware that this is challenging. You know, you're, you're going to be talking to real hardware. But um, since you're doing that, we'll we'll do we'll run these tests on the device. Um, but you have to make sure that you're very, very careful because you don't want to avoid damage to the device. More importantly, as I've always discussed in my tutorials, there are a lot of security concerns with opening up your hardware to the outside world. You got to be super careful and super responsible about what you're doing over here. So just keep that in mind. Uh, be responsible. Keep your firewalls you know, closed. Keep your ports closed or open only when you need them. Things like that. So it's now going to write a test script for me to validate all of this. So if you look at this, it's going to set up the power supply. OK, so it's it's now creating like a fake path. And so if you look at this. It's now testing the connection, it's testing the output, it's testing the toggle output. So all of these things we can run real time and observe it on our power supply to make sure that it that the library that I pulled right is actually working. And this is yes, it's going to require some manual verification, but that's really OK, because we want to look at it for the first time. And later on, we can automate a lot of that testing. And so it will run in an automated way, but we want to just observe it kind of manually. So if you look over here, toggle output, select output. So instead of running those individually, we're having a test write this for us. And then it shows us how to run that test. Safety first, of course, all those details. So that's kind of where we're at in the, the next part of this tutorial. We're actually going to run through the code that I've already generated and show you how all of this works together. OK, so now we're ready to run the test. And if you're going to notice, I'm not using the code that I generated from ChatGPT because I have all of this already in the repository. I'm not going to go through that exercise all over again, although you saw me do it in real time. Every person has a different flavor for how they want their code structured and how they want it to run. So this is the way that I did it. Again, you're more than welcome to structure it in a different way. You now know how to create the driver class and write the test to validate your driver class. So now I want to run that test. So in this particular case, I'm actually running this on my Raspberry Pi, and this is running in a remote remote shell. And if you see over here, we ran all these different tests that it generated and it validated it 
was actually physically running on my power supply. So I was able to watch it in real time, enabling the output, disabling and setting all the different values. That's really important because we need to get a baseline and make sure that everything is working. If you want to manually test edge cases, you want to ask it to create other edge cases, cases for you, that's totally fine. But we want to make sure that our fundamental drivers like we have over here are functioning correctly before we move to the next step. Now, once we have that, we go back to our driver class and we go to ChatGPT. I'm going to open up a new window. I'm going to say I have the following code. Okay. Um, so imagine that I'm new. I don't have a lot of experience with writing web frameworks, but I know that I've played around with fast API and I've created a hello world uh, type of web application. Now, again, even if you're not at that point, you can create a new chat and say, you know, teach me a little bit about web frameworks. Should I use fast API, Flask? You can read online, you can get tutorials. That's fine. But we're going to assume for the sake of brevity in this tutorial, we're going to assume that you are familiar with web services. Uh, again, you can learn about that. I'm just going to use Fast API. So I'm going to tell ChatGPT I want to use Fast API. So let's start again. I have the following code. Okay. This, let's, it knows contextually what this is because I have all my doc strings over here, but I'm going to, I'm just going to give it some extra information. So this is a class that physically controls my power supply, DP832. I want to control this using a web service. Um, I am comfortable with fast API. Can you help me put together a web service in, in a in Python using fast API? Um, to act as routes to control each one of these functions. Now, it's really helpful if you give it an example. Here is an example. Follow. You can use this as a pattern. Okay. So let's go back here and let's say, uh, get output state. So I can say something like this. For this function, triple backticks are always helpful when you're putting code in there. I would use a route with something like this. I would use, even let's make it even simpler, a URL like this www.example.com forward slash get output state. And it would return on or off. Okay, let's see how this does. We give it a lot of information. It is going to take time to process. Um, there was a lot uh, in the class. It's going to... Uh, give us kind of an introduction, show us what we need to do to install Uvicorn, Fast API. Those are what's needed in order to set up the web service. Again, um, I strongly encourage you to just ask ChatGPT or whatever LLM that you're using to say, show me a hello world application using Fast API, just so you kind of get like a, a basic understanding. So, okay, what this is doing, it's creating a web service and uh, it's using fast API. And so it put a route there's get post. They're all different types of HTTP functions. <clears throat> so this is a route. So when I go to my web page, <clears throat> it will then, uh, grab the state of the power supply and then re return it back. So let's do this. And even, this is so great. It even shows us how to access that service. So um, let's do this. Let's run this in real time. Now, if you can see here, you can define more endpoints below following the same pattern. We can then tell it, hey, you know, you need to, you need to fill this in. Here are the rest of the functions. But let's just, let's just get started. So first of all, I'm going to go over here and make, it, make sure I have installed these pip packages. So pip install. 
And while that's going, I'm going to go over here. I'm going to create a file. Let's call it app.py. I'm going to put this over here. Uh, and then this one, this is called wriggle dp. Okay. Import dp832. Now it's going to set up fast API. And then um, how we run this, it will give me so Unicorn Power Supply Service. Um, oh, that's what they call it, Power Supply Service. So let's rename it Power Supply Service. Uh, and then they call it app, which we have app over here, fast API, and then reload. Okay. So we have all the pip, pip packages. That's good. Uh, let's see if this will work right out of the box. Okay. Ah, we do have one problem. The USB connection type, we didn't fill in. Do you see? I, I didn't even look at the comments. You will need to fill in the arguments for your specific device setup. Okay, so let's go back to our test here. And let's see, how did we set this up? So we set this up over here. So test this. Okay, so we ran this, and this is the connection string that we use. So we're going to copy this. We're going to go back to our service. We're going to paste it in here. So the vid, the pid, and then the USB connection type, visa. Let's give this a shot real time. Uh, let's do this. It's clear. Then let's follow again the instructions. So here, copy and paste that. Let's see how it goes. Okay, so it's up and running. So I'm going to run this. This is curl. You can also do this in a web browser, but because I'm in a remote terminal, I want to, um, I want to run this. So here, oh, okay, here we go. Channel one, the state is off, which it is off. Let me turn it on manually and just see what happens. Oh, it's on. Let's turn it off. And it's off. There you go. So you see that worked right out of the box. Now we can tell it, okay, now fill it in. Um, let's say, let's give it feedback. That's great. You did a great job. Now fill in the set voltage and current methods. I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but I want to, I want to just modify, you know, a little bit just to show you how we can iterate with it. <clears throat> also, another thing while it's generating that another thing is that's important to establish. If you notice I have an uh, exception handler that sends an HTTP exception, right? We don't want things to just totally bomb out and not give us information. So we want it because we're using sometimes a web service. We want those web services to be able to interpret that as some sort of error. Okay. And then we give them the detailed error, but we want to give them status codes. That's how HTTP works. I have to give them status codes. So if you see over here, okay, now it's adding all of this. I can also, in the meantime, while I'm doing this, I have um different, uh, IDEs and different uh, different helpers, not only ChatGPT, but other LLMs like this one is Codium. I use Copilot. I use all, all sorts of different types, but I can generate a doc string while I'm waiting. And then this adds this in over here, which is really nice. I can accept that uh, over here, accept. And now I have a nice little code block over here. I can have ChatGPT do that as well for my doc string, but that's kind of really nice. I can just add that in there again, leveraging AI wherever I can. So if you look over here, now this, I'm going to lose my doc, but that's okay, my doc string. So now um, I have, I need to go back and update the vid and PID. So let's go back and the vid and the PID, which is the vendor ID and the product ID go back and edit that okay let's go rerun this service we reloaded yes yes this uh i need to go back to wriggle now what i can do just so it has context uh i need to tell it by the way this is my updated code btw this is my updated code for your reference notice how I change some parameters. Okay, so just so it has context of what we've um, 
just so it knows because we're going to ask it to generate some tests for us in, the min in, a, in a minute. So let's go over here, started. Let's do a curl, make sure that output state still works. Okay, failed to connect, could not connect to server. So let's see what happened. Application, okay, so we didn't wait for the application to start. Let's do this again. Great. Um, now, what I can do is I can open this in a browser. So, uh, and then 8,000. I've opened up the port so I can hit this. There is no root route, so it's not going to hit anything. But once I put it over there, uh, forward slash one, because I need the channel. Let's make sure we have everything here. So I should be able to hit this. Let's make sure. Okay. So we want to go here. And it could be that I haven't set up all of my ports or, or, or my firewalls. So I'll just do it locally right over here. But now we also want to test the ability to run this over here. So we want to be able to run all this other stuff. So set current. Let's look at the examples that it gave us. So... Over here, we have set voltage. So then let's set the voltage. Okay, so the voltage has been set to five volts. I'm gonna turn it on, right? And then we can also, I'm looking over here, it says five volts. Okay, great. So we validate all this now. Given the code I just gave you, I need you to write a test that validates all of these fast API routes. Keep in mind, I am okay with actually controlling the hardware, okay? Or you can just mock it out. It's entirely up to you, but now it will write the whole module for me and generate uh, a test client. So it's first I need to install PyTest, which we'll do that in the meantime while we're waiting. I already have it, but just to give you an idea. And then you can see over here, it's writing all of this. And so it's going to run these commands and make sure that the actual response, the status code, everything is working properly. And so we would run that test after that, and then we validated everything. And then we'll just continue. We iterate over this again and again and again until we get all the functionality that we want. Now, the same thing we would do with the DL3021 Python driver. So again, let's just run through that super, super quick. This person first hit on GitHub has a DL3000 drivers. I would take this whole thing. I'd say, okay, given this class, let's go raw, given this class, right, start a new one, given this Python, there's a class, yes, this Python class, I need. I would say I need tests. I'd validate those tests, so I'd run it through. Once I know that these drivers are good and they, they serve me well, I validate it with the tests again. Then I say I need a web service using fast API that provides routes for each one of these function calls. Okay, and then again, we write tests for that. And we go through the whole thing again, rinse and repeat. Again, it is a multi-step process. So again, we start with getting the drivers. You can either start with the Skippy manual. You can start with drivers that we found on GitHub. You can ask it to tweak it. Maybe you don't want a class. Maybe you want this, you want that. And then ask it to write tests on top of that. 
Then after you've validated that your drivers are good, you're happy with it, build a web application, in this case, using FastAPI to put it all together, and then write tests to validate that. At that point, you have a full end-to-end -end web service that can control your instruments uh, from beginning to end. So today we looked at writing drivers and a full stack web application, a web service to control both our power supply and DC electronic load. We also, most importantly, leverage generative AI to write all of this for us, which significantly sped up the process. If you enjoyed this video, please check out the rest of the videos in this channel. You can hit the subscribe button and definitely hit that like button. Thanks for watching.